Still we ready? Yes, sir. I'd like to call the meeting of the Village Board of Trustees. Today is Tuesday, November 28th, 2017. I'm in lieu of the absence of uh, the Village President, we would need a uh, motion to nominate uh, somebody to serve as temporary chairman. I make that motion. You need Nick Stecker. Please. Nick Stecker. Trustee Anyone Stecker. Okay. Second that motion. Uh, Mr. Mr. Clerk, do you want to call a roll on that? Trustee Calcagno? Aye. Trustee Celestino? Aye. Trustee Miller? Trustee, uh, Trustee uh, Perry? Aye. Trustee Stecker? Chairman. Trustee Yorkovich? Aye. President could do so. Okay, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, Tuesday, November 28th is 7 o'clock. Uh, if everyone could please stand for the pledge. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Mr. Clerk, the roll call, please. Trustee Calcagno. Present. Trustee uh, Celestino. Present. Trustee Miller. <coughs> Trustee Perry. Present. Trustee Stecker. Present. Trustee Yorkovich. Here. Present. President Gattuso. Um, we have a presentation on the agenda, but it requires the adoption of a resolution which appears on the active agenda. So if we could have a motion to approve a resolution recognizing retiring Chairman Carl Panic of the Westchester Community Blood Program. So moved. Second. Uh, you can vote by acclamation. Oh yeah, I need a motion. So who's? So who's Carl had the motion. I was second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. I've got uh, two items here uh, for Mr. Panic. The first is a proclamation uh, presented by Senator Kimberly Lightford uh, congratulating on the occasion of receiving the 2017 Most Dedicated Blood Drive Coordinator Award. Um, whereas the members of the Illinois Senate are pleased to congratulate Carl Panic on the occasion of receiving the 2017 Most Dedicated Blood Drive Coordinator Award, and whereas Carl Panic has dedicated 35 years of his life as a volunteer serving the Westchester Community Blood Program by joining the program in 1982 and becoming chairman in 1986, and whereas Carl Panic, a retired editor at the Chicago Tribune newspaper, recruited and organized a dedicated group of community volunteers who serve with him, maintaining that their commitment, passion, and vision is to replenish the blood supply in hospitals wherever needed. And whereas Carl Panic, now age 80, is retiring his position as Westchester Community Blood Program Chairman, and whereas Carl Panic leads his team by hosting four annual blood drives per year and has added a fifth at LifeSource's request for the past five years. And whereas Carl Panic has a committee of volunteers that call previous donors before each blood drive, schedule donors, mail out approximately 400 postcards, and place posters at businesses throughout the community. And whereas Carl Panic works with a Boy Scout troop to set up and take down tables and chairs before and after each drive. And whereas Carl Panic and his committee host bake sales and raffle donated local community items that generate funds for newspaper ads and additional support for the Westchester Community Blood Program. Therefore, be it proclaimed by the Senate of the 100th General Assembly of the State of Illinois that we thank Carl Panic for his service to the citizens of the State of Illinois, especially to those who benefit from his blood drives, extend our congratulations on receiving the 2017 Most Dedicated Blood Drive Coordinator Award and wish him the best in his retirement, and be it further proclaimed that a suitable copy of this resolution be presented to Carl Panic as a symbol of our esteem and respect. Uh, Senator Kimberly Lightford. Thank you, Mr. 
And I have one more for you here. Certificate of, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Those are big shoes to fill. Absolutely. Please. Wow. Everyone deserves a round of applause. Well, hey, Carl, one more yeah, I've got one more thing you. for you, and then we'll all come down. We'll, we'll snap a couple of pictures if that's okay. Oh, all right. <clears throat> this is a certificate of achievement. This uh, certificate is proudly presented to Carl Panic in recognition of 35 years of dedication and service to the Westchester Community Blood Program. On behalf of the Village of Westchester, Mayor Gattuso, honored trustees, and village employees, with respect and admiration, we award you this certificate of achievement and congratulate you on receiving the 2017 Most Dedicated Blood Drive Coordinator Award. Thank you. 
Oh, jeez. Oh, is that good? Yeah, yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Wow. wow. That's oh, awesome. Wow. Thank you very much Thanks, again. Carol. Thank you, all of you guys. Thank you. Uh, no, no more uh, presentations this evening. Um, we'll move down to number five, public comments and questions. Um, this is uh, your guys' opportunity to let us know what's on your mind. Any, uh, any takers this evening? No? Once? Twice? Table's closed. All right. We'll move on to the consent agenda. Good for, uh, I'll go through these. Uh, A, the approval of the uh, record of bills ending 11-28-2017 and the amount not to exceed $2,088,363.89. Uh, B, the approval of minutes from November 14th, the regular board meeting and the committee of the whole. C, the resolution approving and authorizing the execution of a professional services agreement between Azavar Audit Solutions in the Village of Westchester. An ordinance providing for the levy assessment and collection of taxes for the fiscal year beginning May 1st, 2017 and ending April 30th, 2018 for the Village of Westchester, County of Cook, State of Illinois. E, a resolution approving the 2018 schedule of meetings of the Village President and Board of Trustees of the Village of Westchester, Cook County, Illinois. And F, a motion <coughs> to reschedule the regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Trustees on December 19th, 2017 to December 12th, 2017. Does anybody need any items pulled? No? I guess we'll look for a motion and a second to approve so moved. consent. Tom? Second. And second. Angel. <coughs> Roll. Trustee Kelcagno. Aye. Trustee Celestino. Aye. Trustee Miller. And, uh, Trustee Perry. Aye. Trustee Stecker. Aye. Pr uh, Trustee Yurkovich. Aye. Motion passes. All right, moving down to the active agenda. Item A. An ordinance approving and authorizing the execution of a lease agreement between T-Mobile Central LLC and the Village of Westchester, Cook County, Illinois. Look for a motion. So moved. Second. Uh, second, Frankie. Roll. Trustee Calcagno. Aye. Trustee Celestino. Aye. Trustee Perry. Aye. Trustee Stecker. Aye. Trustee Yurkovich. Aye. Passes. B, an ordinance approving and authorizing the execution of an amendment to the lease agreement between Sprintcom Inc. and the Village of Westchester, Cook County, Illinois. So moved. Second. Tommy, or no. I'm sorry, Carl and Tommy. Trustee Calcagno. Aye. Trustee Celestino. Aye. Trustee Perry. Aye. Trustee Stecker. Aye. Trustee Yurkovich. Aye. Passed. All right, C, a resolution authorizing the execution of an automated traffic law enforcement agreement with Safe Speed LLC. Motion to approve. Anyone? So moved. Frankie? Second. We have a little discussion on that one. Sure. Tom, Tommy with the second. A discussion? Um, could we get a little just uh, clarification on is this the uh, current vendor we're with now just renewing or? Right. Okay. Uh, he currently had a contract with Safe Speed that expired in the renewal of that contract. Um, he currently has two years with a two-year option. Um, this is the standard contract that Safe Speed uses for all their municipalities. Um, so that's basically what we have for this one. We actually have the ability to terminate this agreement after 365 days yes. with 90-day notice, even though it's got a two-year initial term. <coughs> Any further discussion? Okay, get a roll. Trustee Calcagno. Aye. 
Trustee Celestino. Aye. Trustee Perry. Aye. Trustee Stecker. Aye. Trustee Yerkovich. Aye. Motion passed. Right, and uh, number in the letter D we already uh, took care of, which was the resolution uh, recognizing Carl Panic. Uh, so moving down to the uh, manager's report, Jay. Um, I have two things. The first thing is the detection. You want to the detection today. We'll have a follow ordinance at the next meeting. We'll hear the base ordinance. We should be in a major alternate revenue code bond. So we kind of couldn't get those done in time. So this ordinance will come next time. So we have four ordinances on the regular agenda. They're all capital base ordinances. And those are all refunded as the alternate revenue code bond. <coughs> I'm good with that. Okay. That's it. That's all I have. Mike, attorney's report. Uh, yes, along with those abatement ordinances, uh, we <coughs> also adopt a resolution directing the county clerk under the PTEL, the tax extension limitation law, to segregate the library's levy from the village's levy. So that'll be on that agenda also. The other thing is uh, on the cow tonight, there's an item dealing with the discussion of the uh, collective bargaining agreement that we were successfully negotiated with the police union but there's also uh, the call for an executive session so that we can discuss that matter in executive session so we only have to deal with that in executive session and we move that executive session of the cow meeting <clears throat> since we're not voting on it tonight rather than it being on the regular agenda so you can just adjourn your regular meeting tonight without being concerned about the cow and the, the executive session on the cow. Thank you. Okay. Uh, board member reports, Frank. I have nothing new to report. No. Um, I got nothing tonight, Tom. I have, I have nothing. Angela. Nothing this evening. Carl. Nothing, thank you. All right, moving on. Uh, clerk, anything? Nothing. All right. Um, go to, I guess the <coughs> department head. Yeah, the department heads. We got uh, <coughs> Steve. Anything, Chief? Uh, one thing, um, I, I received a word from uh, the COPS grant. Uh, if you remember a few months ago, I came to you and asked you uh, the COPS grant, again, was being activated <coughs> through the federal government. Came to the board and I told me to go ahead and uh, try to get three officers uh, with this COPS grant. Uh, we weren't qualified for three, we put it for two, and I received word last week that we got the grant for the two officers. Great. So uh, I'm meeting with the grant writer on Thursday, and uh, we're gonna sit down, and I'm gonna find out exactly all the specifics, so I will report next board meeting what those are, and then that way you can give me some guidance as to whether we'll continue to pursue it or if we wanna back out of it. So uh, I will have all the details at the next board meeting, and then we can and go from there. And your long-term plan was also to be adding officers as well? Well, I'd like to, but also I know I'm sure we're gonna have at least one retirement. Well, this is a three-year uh, grant opportunity, but then we also have to hang on to those officers for an additional year, so it's a four-year deal, and I'm sure I'm gonna have one or two retirements anyway, so it would be up to where we're at to keep the strength with the three uh, or two officers or keep it where it's at today, so. And you know, I just I saw something the other day. The, the the JAG grants were due this week. Did you know if they put anything in? No, uh, our Todd, our grant writer, said that we didn't even put in because we just got the grant with the computers and that we wouldn't even have a chance of getting anything. Okay, yeah, I didn't know if there was anything on a wish list or anything like that. Uh, Greg? <laughs> just one thing. I, I, it'll be in the uh, <laughs> weekly report, but... Uh, Today I spent uh, a lot of time over at NORCOM with um, Motorola. What we were t discussing is uh, something that'll be coming up. As I said, I'll explain a little bit in greater detail in, in the weekly report, but um, the, the radio band that the police use has to be abandoned by 2021. At least that's current FCC uh, decisions. But uh, it may be pushed off as discussed. But uh, in the future, um, options have to be decided upon with the towns that are at NORCOM, at least if not all the towns that are around here that use the, the current radio band. And uh, in the discussions, Motorola provided us with a couple uh, demonstration radios. Sergeant Borkovic is out on the street now with one. Uh, I 
going to be carrying the other one, going to be doing some tests in our towers on Monday. Uh, Melrose Park, uh, Little Grove, uh, Franklin Park will be receiving radios as well, be doing the tests with us uh, over the next couple weeks. Hopefully determine uh, if there's an option to uh, do a joint purchasing. Wouldn't be something until next year most likely, but at least uh, getting out there and, and doing some tests to determine what our best option is, number one, financially, but then also what is our best option uh, um, you know, technically, what's going to work the best for, for our uh, area. So uh, I'll, I'll fill everybody in in the weekly report with uh, some of the findings and, and some of the equipment, some of the costs that will be out there <coughs> for next year. That's all I have. Good. Robert? No report. And Melissa? I just wanted to make sure that everybody knows. Um, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Um, we're having a zoning code open house held here in the community room on December 14th. Um, from 4 to 6.30, so if you're interested in coming out and taking a look <coughs> at the draft code and, or some of the boards that we'll have up showing you know, some, some of the new code that will be in there, um, feel free to stop by. Right. Uh, I just had a question. Has there been any further with the hotel? With what? With the hotel. With the Hampton? They were supposed to resubmit drawings um, back in mid-November, but they didn't. So um, okay. I'll check back in with them and get a status update. Okay, yeah, that's right. I thought there was supposed to be something being done this month, so that's why I was curious if they were still pursuing that or not. Um, all right. I have nothing this evening, so I guess we'll we move for a motion to adjourn. To adjourn. I'm going to the so moved. Angelo. Second. Tommy. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, move into the Committee of the Whole. Fair warning, if you guys don't want to stay, we get it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for everything, guys. Yeah. Absolutely. Merry Christmas. Call the meeting to order the Committee of the Whole for Tuesday, November 28th, 2017. The time <coughs> is 7.22. Uh, roll call. Trustee Calcagno. Present. Trustee Celestino. Present. Trustee Miller. Trustee Perry. Present. Trustee Stecker. Present. Trustee Yorkovich. Present. President Catuso. Uh, new business. A, proposals for inline duct heater repairs. Is that you, Robert, or Jay? I could probably summarize it probably a little bit quicker. Okay. <laughs> no offense. Yeah, no, I apologize. Um, <laughs> Campers. The, the blowing of the air on that building. This is to create heat and cold, correct? Okay. So, just uh, so, have we have we 
and, and I think we probably have, Robert, because I know we've talked about these before. Have we entertained the idea of about what the replacement cost would be? This is replacement cost for these three units. Oh, yeah. it's complete oh, replacement yeah. for the yeah. three this units. Okay, so it's not. Oh, you unit. said repair. That's why I was like. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's I don't want to. Replacement cost for the units in the ceiling, and, and they're going to drop them down, rewire them, re Gotcha, them. gotcha. Okay. <laughs> I guess my question would be is what else is left up there that's going to break that we're going to find out about? Because we have a maintenance agreement with the company YMI. If that maintenance agreement is signed for around November coming, we'll charge them $125,000. Um, and this, as part of that maintenance agreement, they come out and do a deep estimate of the unit. Um, it change filters, right, and everything like that, yeah. Well, and that's my point is like are we still have 60 year old yeah. rooftop yeah. units that are going to yeah. be an issue next yeah. year or yeah. the next year but those rooftop <coughs> units have nothing to do with the police side correct so the like right here this is completely different so the controls that control all this all these areas are, are those independent controls I should be asking uh, and the new stuff that we want to replace here um, okay uh, most of the rooftop units are are individual drop down units where we have a sensor. Like we have a sensor in this room and a rooftop unit that, that controls most of this room. We have one for the community room and a, and a couple other and a few over in the police department. <coughs> what the strategy is with the new control system that we put in is that as we put in new units, whether it's rooftop units or these inline duct heaters, that they all have what's called a back net compatible. Mm -hmm. So there is a, 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 a computer board we can put into those and link them all into this control system eventually. So as we renew or replace, we can get central control on of all of them and then control each of these rooms so we don't have to keep it on when there's nobody in here. So we are looking forward. So will the three new units be tied in? This, is the, this was the uh, controls that we got through D3? Yes. Okay, and, th and then the three new units would get tied in Right. And they, we already have um, either side of the duct heater uh, already has sampling devices. We've got <coughs> air pressure, we've got air movement, we've got temperature on, on the intake and the, the output, mm -hmm. and the damper control already put in and part of the control system. We just don't have a working unit. They're all over 25 years old, all in need of repair. I'm just getting it. So whatever we ever have to do on this side, we would have needed that anyways. Th that yeah. Yeah, I, I would just like to get some sort of an idea as to what's left that's going to break and that how, how much all this stuff is. I have an inventory finance on these units because I think you've got to be using this bid for this YMI. Is there an inventory of all the units? It would be nice. It'd be nice. And then, and then they, just so we have an idea. These, these and to make sure that they're all compatible, you're too. Deep, they'll be on their next status, like, unknown date, so I don't know what you got. Uh, one of them was installed shortly before we took over the building in 92, and the others are older than that. Because, I mean, it, it, Jay, it, this is something that we all that always comes up in the budget that we really don't have these ideas, and we need to start, I understand you know. percent and I think, Robert, we still need to report that. We need to report that you have and put all the equipment, because I think that's important for the board to see. And then at the sure. same time, yeah, you, you know, it's part of your planning. Yeah, their long-term plan, because every year it's just like, man, okay, what's next? What's next? And there's always just that what I'm factor. For two questions come up. Two maintenance agreements. One for Snyder Electric, and the other one's for the YMI. We canceled the Snyder Electric because that was for the Andover system that we replaced with the D3 controls. Robert, two, two things. So could we get um, what you did with the vehicles, at least maybe uh, an itemized uh, uh, list of all the units that are left and approximate ages? If you don't know, you don't know, but. What the replacement cost would be on all of these, and I mean, we know they all need to be replaced now, so there's no, you know, next year, next gotta, year, next year. Yeah, um, we, we we have done that. Okay. Um, the previous finance director and previous village manager had extensive meetings. I even asked for fifty thousand dollars in in the budget process uh, last December, and I got zero. 
So we were anticipating these units needed to be replaced. And now we have to do it on an emergency basis. Uh, but we do have that, and when YMI came on board, we did a, a condition assessment, and uh, to answer your question, the, 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 the piece of equipment that is in most need of replacement after we do these uh, would be the uh, air compressors on the roof that handle the whole south end of the building. Those are from 1992. Uh, they're doing maintenance on them and they're working, but uh, pretty soon we won't be able to get replacement parts. Um, we won't need that till the cooling season, but you know. Uh, and th our maintenance agreement, uh, you know, I know we have that hourly rate, and, and I'm assuming that hourly rate um, sounds low, so that's that's due to the fact that we have a maintenance agreement. Without that maintenance agreement, that hourly rate would be? Yeah, it's higher. It'd be uh, on what? demand. And, yeah. Okay. And when it's really hot, they're really expensive. Right. Right? And, uh, okay. So, uh, and, and we did get uh, 12 bids for that maintenance agreement. So, I mean, they were the lowest overall. Sure. Uh, but it's all prevailing wage that, that kicks it up. Yeah. Okay. Well, but I can supply that. That report. Can we get That'd be awesome. Yeah. You want to get it ratified then at the next meeting? Yeah, we'll put it on the active agenda, but if you guys want to move it, move forward and just so we can order. yeah, I don't see a problem. Does anyone have any? No, so, so we'll, get we'll ratify it. Yeah. <coughs> Why don't we put it on the consent for ratification? Andrew over here. <laughs> well, not today. Was, it's like sixty degrees. Up and that was what nineteen thousand and some change. Nineteen eight ninety. All right, uh, next uh, item B, proposal from Civic Systems uh, for software purchase agreement. That is for the, your vendor for software, your general underwriter, <coughs> if you want to come out here and do training, come meet for us, answer some of our questions that we have. We're not going to have mine and finance requirements. Uh, they may want to charge us a little bit for them, and it's also your first call in order to buy the equipment. So we're going to have them come out here, and that's why they charge you. Do we have an approximate idea of what? Yeah, it's in there. I think it was 40, um, <coughs> 4,800. Yeah, it wasn't. It's it just wasn't a flat really fee, is not to exceed or. They have some modules that we've requested information on there. I think the current purchase one, I just don't think they're using the software. All right. Look to put that in the active agenda for the next board meeting for, for the 12th. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah. off topic a little bit. Were we able to implement those uh, the palm readers to check in and out? Um, we're working on that. Okay. Because we need to test. Yeah. Um, is that all part of the same? Yeah. Okay. That cost is included. That, that's why I brought that up. I yeah, wasn't sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it's a training situation more than a software. Okay. Right, we look to put that on the next active agenda. Uh, C, the resolution approving the CBA between MAP and the village. That will be the topic for discussion in the executive session. Okay. Then. So we'll defer that yes, to the executive. Please. All right. Uh, item D, <coughs> resolution regarding a retirement health care funding plan. Is that Mike? Or? Yeah, this is for the um, patrol unit. Um, they've had over several contracts a provision that would uh, authorize the establishment of a VBA. It's a retirement health care savings plan where the employees donate their, not donate, but contribute their uh, own um, payouts on certain personal time, uh, vacation time. This group has elected to defer some of their own salaries to this plan. And as I said, it's been in the contract for a number of uh, editions of the contract. We finally got enough people to agree to establish one of these. This is, I've seen this all over the world where bargaining units, they want the ability to have this and then they can't get their own members to agree to do this. The young guys aren't thinking about retirement, they want the cash, where the older guys want this. So believe it or not, this, the police unit, out of the 20 members, only six of them are going to join this. <clears throat> Two, only two of the three members that sit at the bargaining table are willing to join this plan. The other one is opting out. However, all new hires will be required to opt into this plan to, 
to do that. So what you have here is a resolution approving uh, all of the uh, documents, the, the plan documents. This is put together by the IPPFA, the Illinois Public Pension Fund Association, and um, it's a very well-known organization. Uh, well, like I said, you only have six people. Uh, now in this unit, joining that, but IPPFA has assured me that if any additional employees, such as the firefighters, public works, any of those collectively bargained units wants to join, there's no additional fee for having them join that plan. There's a $350 startup cost this first time around, but thereafter, you can have your non-union people form their own group, but <clears throat> it's pretty hard to get a consensus from everybody as to what they want to do, so. It's strictly based on funding from the members only. It's their money, it's, it's not our money. They establish yes, their own Like it, Instead of getting the cash payout for sick leave or vacation mm -hmm. or whatever, they donate that into, they contribute that to the fund. It saves you payroll taxes as an employer, okay. so. So that's what you have on there. I'd ask that that be put on the consent agenda for the next okay. meeting. Um, moving forward, um, an ordinance amending various sections <coughs> of the village code in order to combine the ZBA and plan commission of the village of Westchester. You have an ordinance uh, uh, in the packet that um, combines the plan commission and the zoning board of appeals into a 10 person plan and zoning commission. Um, there's probably a dozen or more sections of the village code, probably two to three dozen sections of the village code that's why this ordinance is so <laughs> voluminous that mention either plan commission or zoning board of appeals so in addition to the sections that create this commission we have to modify all of the other sections that reference the old commission so i'd ask that be placed on the consent agenda and do we know the status of the um, <coughs> commissioners is the um is the president no no So they would now that it's a, a combined because we've gone back and forth. We w we'd split them and then we'd join them. Okay. Okay, but technically they would all have to be reappointed under yes. this new. Yes. Yes. Okay. Would their would their appointments stagger or? We're going to stagger them. The ordinance staggers them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's four, three, and three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so at the next meeting, we're not looking to make the appointments next meeting, or is this just? Okay, all right. I have to talk to actually Jay and uh, President Gattuso to see if you want this effective in January, et cetera, instead of at the December 12th meeting. And we don't have anything coming up that we know of right now. Melissa? I don't have any public hearing scheduled. Okay. okay. All right, um, an ordinance amending a section 18.58.100 entitled Temporary Signs, Chapter 18.58, entitled Signs of the Westchester Municipal Code. Melissa, do you want to speak to this? I can do it. Okay. Yeah, simply to allow a it would have been much faster than you. Yeah. <laughs> Now, when, when the comprehensive amendment of the zoning ordinance is being scheduled, we have to blend these two new ordinances into that, so, okay. And this would just be while the work is being completed, right? Upon termination of the job, signs come up. Yep. Otherwise, it's like a commercial advertising sign on residential property. Okay. Uh, old business. Oh, sorry. Oh. Everybody had a problem? I said, so everybody. Yeah. Not that. Go to consent okay. agenda also. Consent agenda. Um, <coughs> old business, nothing, information only. Mike, you got anything? Or Jay? Nothing. Or our village manager slash chief? Actually, <laughs> I think village manager. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, the public. Not all at once. All right. Um, well, then I would uh, look to uh, get a motion to adjourn. You want to adjourn into executive <coughs> session and discuss collective negotiating 
matters between the public body and its employees or their representatives. And no action will be taken. No action will be taken coming out of executive session. Right. You'll just be adjourned. Motion so moved. All right, Tommy. <coughs> second. Carl. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a roll call vote. Sorry. Oh. Trustee Calcagno. Aye. Trustee Celestino. Aye. Trustee Perry. Aye. Trustee Stecker. Aye. Trustee Yurkovich. Aye. Passed. All right. We are adjourned.